Tonight, local doctors warn against COVID-19 complacency, urging those with symptoms to get tested. And a rare World War II artifact donated to a local museum. From our seven Spencer Golf Studios, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. Port Perry Health Authorities are urging residents to get tested if they have any coronavirus symptoms, with referrals no longer needed to attend the local COVID-19 clinic. The desperate calls come as interstate case numbers surge. It may be an unpleasant experience, but authorities say getting tested for coronavirus is critical to stopping the spread. These clinics are open for six hours every day and anyone can present to these clinics. There's no need to go to the GPs anymore, unlike before. COVID-19 clinics are located around the region. Doctors say the Port Piri Centre has been visited by hundreds of residents since it opened in March. It, it's sporadic, but generally there is at least three to four people that present most days and then other days much more numbers. The calls for testing comes as Victoria's case numbers skyrocket with 374 new cases today. From tonight, mandatory mask wearing will be implemented in their hot zones. Health authorities say there's no mask requirements implemented here at this stage. There is no clear-cut policy here in South Australia and I would refrain from making a comment on the value of masks. If people are vulnerable, they're elderly or uh, you've got other immune conditions, it's worthwhile considering wearing one when outside sort of doing the shopping or interacting with large numbers of people. Residents across the region are being urged to not take any chances and get tested no matter how minor their symptoms may be. If they have um, any signs of a cough or a fever or not feeling generally well with flu-like symptoms and definitely for people who are arriving from interstate. And locals are being reminded to continue practising social distancing. All of the current directions being provided in regards to keeping themselves safe and of course um, that social distancing is, continues to be recommended. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. A 25-year-old Port Lincoln motorist has lost his licence on the spot after allegedly drink driving. Patrols pulled over the Mazda Ute on the Flinders Highway Sunday evening, where it's alleged the driver returned a blood alcohol reading of 0.119, twice the legal limit. The man was reported for drink driving and was issued with a six-month loss of licence. His vehicle was impounded and he'll face court at a later date. The South Australian government will tonight activate a code blue across the upper Spencer Gulf in mid-north for the next four nights. This alert allows homeless people to seek guaranteed accommodation through their local crisis centre. The code blue applies for Port Perry, Wyala, Kadena and Clare, with temperatures expected to plummet below 5 degrees. Regional residents are encouraged to share the message and help those who need it most. Our local property market continues to record strong figures, with wireless steelworks development driving up house prices, according to new figures from Propertyology. Port Lincoln has also seen some good growth, with agents recording high demand. Despite some trepidation in the market when the COVID pandemic first hit, regional real estate has bounced back strong. The market's been fantastic. You know, we've had a, there's been a shortage of supply. Um, buyers have been very active. A $600 million development of a new steel mill in Wyala is set to create more than 1,500 jobs, giving a boost in confidence to the local market. We'll have a knock-on effect to other businesses uh, in the Wyala community. The city already seeing its effect with a 10% jump in the average house price from last year. Wyala is already one of the strongest markets in all of Australia and this is before these um, exciting projects happen. The average household rent in Wyala has also seen a spike by nearly 5%. Being a roughly 20,000 population, um, it takes less to stimulate an economy of that size than um, an economy of, say, five million in Sydney. Port Lincoln has also bucked the trend with an increased demand for property, but there's a shortage of housing supply, which is fueling a rise in local prices. Realtors say federal grants and the Home Builder Scheme has also helped stimulate the market. It's going to drive jobs, confidence, property prices and property rents. Because there's been a shortage of homes on the market, uh, the buyer's there, the demand is still there and people are still active, so that's holding prices up. Uh, it's actually been a really good time to sell your home, there's not much competition. Nathan Rector, 7 Spencer Golf News. 
Wireless Maritime Museum has been specially chosen to display a rare artifact from World War II. The special donation, which includes a Japanese samurai sword, will now be featured alongside other rare objects from that era. A samurai sword, usually seen in Japanese action films, now displayed in Wayala's Maritime Museum. This location specifically chosen due to its growing collection of rare artifacts from World War II. It's not usual that uh, one receives, you know, uh, high quality items like this, you know, in, in Wayala. So this, this is a big honour. This historic and impressive donation set to bring in extra tourists to the Steel City. It's such a, a great thing for um, Wayala to be proud of to have it on display now. Our Maritime Museum and um, we already get some great um, traction for people coming through but this will just add another dimension to that. John Jack Hilton Hacker served as an officer in the Australian Army during the Papua New Guinea campaign between 1943 to 1944. He captured the Japanese samurai sword and flag after a battle with a Japanese platoon. Other items including dog tags, a pistol pouch, belt, map case and compass were also carried by Jack throughout his war days. His uh, son, uh, Barry Hecker from Port Macquarie, uh, who decided to donate that museum. And in his own words, he said this is the best place for them to be displayed on. The family holding on to the artefacts for the last three decades before finding the perfect location for their new home. The samurai sword is now on display in the World War II gallery, along with interpretive signage explaining its story. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, Port Lincoln's art workshop to reopen, but restrict conditions in place. And the Jubilee Oval upgrade completion date up in the air. Welcome back. Clare Valley Council is scrambling to fix a budget blunder following a misplaced decimal point that would have seen rates at $13.28 instead of over $1,328. The council called an emergency meeting last night to rectify the issue, which would have cost 90% of its $11 million rate revenue. The council refused to comment on the mistake, but a spokesperson did say the budget and annual business plan has been adopted and the rates will be gazetted next week. Port Lincoln Council is bowed to public pressure and will reopen the city's art workshop, which has been closed due to the coronavirus pandemic. A strict daily cleaning routine will be enforced, with only one group permitted inside each day. Beaming from ear to ear, you couldn't wipe the smile off Jenny Wilson's face. I am overjoyed. I was very excited to get the news and thanks to the council for uh, letting us come back into the space. Port Lincoln's art community getting ready to move back inside the city's art area building after a long and lonely three months. We are very anxious to get back. We've had a, a few gatherings in the past few weeks. Everyone's just dying to get back in the building and start creating, so it's just really wonderful. The council-owned building closed its doors to the community back in March due to the pandemic, but as positive cases in South Australia dwindled and restrictions eased, the doors remained shut, frustrating community members. This space has been categorised as a sort of an indoor meeting space, where the other areas, say the library and the Nautilus Arts Centre or entertainment could be opened up sooner. Last night, the council moved to reopen the facility to existing user groups. The City Council will foot the $270 weekly cleaning bill for the next three months in order to comply with SA Health. There will only be one group per day um, and that, that means it'll get cleaned every day ready for the users the next day. Obviously social distancing and sort of um, personal hygiene, they're all things that the user groups will um, will need to take on board, which I'm sure they will. It's hoped groups can start using the facility by next week. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. The York Mid-North RDA is calling for the community to get creative and propose new projects for the region. Staff say the recent announcement of upgrades in the Southern Flinders Ranges are proof small ideas can have a big impact. 
The Southern Flinders Range is set to be transformed with the York Mid-North RDA a driving force behind the project. This, this project really ticked the boxes. There's some great opportunity for us and in this area for people in the tourism and also for local businesses to, to really you know, get hold of new ideas. From an idea raised by local residents four years ago, this organisation managed to secure support from all levels of government. The best value for our area from this amazing new resource. So uh, we'll be working with businesses, we'll continue to work with all of those stakeholders. I've been instrumental in, in pushing this forward uh, for us, so uh, we've been very, very happy with the outcome of the work that they've done. The organisation is now looking for the future, asking for community help. A lot of different grants and, and it's quite difficult to pick your way through what all the opportunities actually are if you do have a good idea, so talk to us. Staff say locals could be sitting on the next big thing. We try to use the word reimagine rather than recover because there's got to be new ideas, there's got to be potential for, uh, for uh, different businesses and different ways of doing things. In the meantime, they're excited about the Southern Flinders Ranges rejuvenation. Tourism business, I would be sure, would be looking to, uh, to expand it further and uh, you know um, people will be looking to to run their buses further north and and uh, see what they can do to accommodate. Shari Hams, Seven Spencer Golf News. With South Australian borders remaining closed, AFL Broken Hills plan to finish a multi-million dollar oval upgrade has stalled. The playing surface however is benefiting, showing signs of recovery from years of wear and tear. Across the Jubilee Oval, it's a matter of the finishing touches. The brunt of the $3 million redevelopment is now complete. However, one major component, the light towers, are yet to be switched on. Our Adelaide-based engineers can travel to Broken Hill, but if they travel back to Adelaide, they have to self-isolate for 14 days, which isn't feasible. The lights need to be commissioned before AFL Broken Hill can receive an occupancy certificate. Officials hoping if games go ahead this year, City Council will give them a temporary reprieve. If we were to have some football played here in September, we're hoping that Council would issue an interim occupancy certificate, which is what we're working towards. Not having footy in Broken Hill in 2020 does have a silver lining. The groundskeeper saying the Oval would usually see around 32 hours of activity a week. At the moment, it's none at all, with the surface benefiting from the lack of action. After the replanting and that, the Oval's starting to come up in uh, pretty good nick. We've got a couple of little patches that we need to uh, do some work on when the weather warms up, but apart from that, I think uh, the playing surface is looking pretty good. It's hoped the rest will give the city a first-class football surface for next season. It copped an absolute pounding with the foot traffic. It copped a pounding with the drought. If we don't have football, glass half full, this surface will be absolutely in first-class condition by the start of the 2021 season. Patrick Roenke, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us. We'll check the latest sports scores from across the region. And nominations for the Community Achievement Awards now open. Nominations for the Community Achievement Awards are now open. Port Augusta City Council is encouraging residents to nominate someone who has been an outstanding local during the pandemic. A list of the categories up for grabs along with more information on the awards can be found on Council's Facebook page. Nominations close on August 11. Football in Broken Hill still remains on the table following a meeting of the league and the city's local clubs. With a shortened season no longer an option, AFL Broken Hill has floated a festival of football idea. It would take the form of a round-robin competition played across September's weekends. The clubs are expected to report back to officials in the coming days. Come back to us in four or five days. We'll then say to them, if they're keen, we'll start training. Let's go through the motions. We'll revisit where we sit in two or three weeks. The fixture would have shortened quarters, creating less risk of injury to players. Time now to check in with the local sports results from the past week. And Broken Hill Tennis recorded a thrilling round, with two ties going down to the wire. Patrick Ranke has the weekend wrap. 
Tennis in the Silver City has returned after a couple weeks off due to school holidays. The first match was very one-sided, Volley smashing Slazenger five sets 41 games to one set 17 games. Kim Wright was exceptional, winning three sets. In contrast, the other games were extremely close, with the match between Yonix and Wilson being decided by just one game. Yonix walking away with bragging rights. The third match also went down to the last match of the night, Puma sneaking home over Prince by three games. Switching to netball now, Wyala was the only league taken to the court over the weekend. Kiwi remains top of the table and undefeated after thumping True Blue by 20 goals. The Ravens showed their prowess against Rupina, winning 54-25. Rupina yet to get a win in the coronavirus-affected season. YCW also had a tough day on the court, falling short to Warriors by 15 goals. And good luck to Broken Hills netballers who are playing their first round after a three-month break due to coronavirus. We'll have those results in next week's sports wrap. To the soccer now and in the South Australian Amateur League, Savoy fought hard but suffered a narrow defeat in the match against Elizabeth Vale, going down 3-2. Jack Scoot was in good form for Savoy, scoring a brace. In the State League, Northern Demons also just came up short against their opposition in the Gawler Eagles. Malith Con equalised for the Demons shortly after half-time, but Gawler managed to retake the ascendancy and secure the three points. The Demons now face the bottom place to Mount Barker this weekend. In the recent round of Wyala Soccer, nothing could split Wanderers and Westlands, a late Westlands penalty helping them secure a share of the points. In the other match, Steel United edged out Croatia to secure a vital win. And that's all in local sport. Footy tips are back on Friday and we'll be back again next week with all of those results. Stay with us after the break. We'll check the day's finance news. And Brit will have the latest weather forecast. Hello again. Time now to check how the Australian stock market fared today. And local shares were mostly in the green. BHP was up on the back of strong quarterly figures. Santos was also up 3%. Elders was up 2%. CSL rose by 3%. While West Farmers also had a positive day. The retail giant rising by around 1.5%. Regional Express remained steady. And the ASX 200 and All Ordinaries recovered yesterday's losses and gained further ground. Both markets up by nearly 2.6%. To the weather now, and it was cool but mostly sunny across the Spencer Gulf and Broken Hill today. With the details, here's Britt. Thanks, John, and good evening. 17 degrees was the region's high today, recorded at Port Augusta this afternoon. Port Pirie and Woodna weren't far behind, both reaching 16 degrees. Wayala, Port Lincoln, Kadena, Cleve and Coffin Bay all got to 14 today. Broken Hill 13, with a high of 12 at Clare and in Adelaide. Looking at today's skies and the satellite images show bright cloud over northeastern parts of South Australia with an upper trough generating the odd shower and storm to our north. Patchy cloud moved over the coast with a cold southwesterly breeze. To our west, cloud clearing under a ridge of high pressure. To tomorrow now on the Gulf waters, east to northeasterly winds at about 10 knots, tending southwest to southeasterly in the late afternoon, seas below one metre. South to southwesterly swells around a metre, but increasing to up to two metres in the south. So let's see what it's going to look like near you. A cloudy day forecast for Port Lincoln tomorrow, looking at a high of 14 degrees. Cleve, partly cloudy and 13. Light early frost at Woodna, warming up to a top of 16, partly cloudy through the day. Wyala looking mostly sunny tomorrow, a top of 14 degrees. Port Augusta mostly sunny, 16 the top there. Kadena fine and 14. Light morning frost at Port Perry with an overnight low of 1 degree, partly cloudy in the afternoon with a high of 15. Similar conditions at Clare tomorrow, looking at a top of 11 degrees and Broken Hill a top of 14 and partly cloudy. Now let's take a quick look further through the week, starting with Thursday. A sunny day for the West Coast and Flinders districts, fine and partly cloudy elsewhere. A high of 18 at Port Augusta, 17 at Woodna, 16 at Wyala and Port Perry, and 15 at Port Lincoln, Broken Hill and Kadena.
Friday showers about the west coast, lower air peninsula and the York Peninsula, but fine and partly cloudy about the remainder of the region. Port Augusta and Broken Hill both with tops of 19 degrees, Wyala 18, Woodna and Port Pirie both 17, Port Lincoln and Kadena 15. And finally now to Saturday with showers forecast about the mid-north but looking mostly fine elsewhere. A high of 18 degrees for Port Augusta and Broken Hill. Woodna and Wyala both kicking off the weekend with a top of 17 degrees. Port Lincoln and Kadena both 16 and Port Piri with a high of 15. And John, that's the forecast. It's back to you. Thanks for that, Brett. And that's the local news this Tuesday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later and we'll be back tomorrow night at 7pm. Until then, on behalf of the team, enjoy your evening. Good night.